Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. This week, an unboxing. We haven't done one of those in a while. I like doing long 3D prints and this thing is really going to help with that because, let's face it, nothing makes you more nervous than actually setting a 12 hour 3D print to sort of like a 24 hour 3D print going and then having to go to bed and thinking, hmm, I wonder if that will go really, really well or whether it will crash, burn and set fire to my entire property. So, I have bought myself a tent. Uh, basically, it is a hood that goes over your 3D printer that is fire resistant, or, you know, it is, it's basically, it is a fireproof tent. Um, on all the adverts I've seen for, for these tents, they always say, theoretically, this should prevent fires, because none of them actually want to say, hey, it will prevent fires, because in case it does actually not prevent fires and burns your house down, and then they'd be liable. But, it's a tent, it's made of fire retardant material, so I'm going to be unboxing it here, assembling it, and giving it a review, seeing what I think of this. So, without further ado, let's cut the box open. Okay, it's fairly well packaged. And, oh, hang on, what's this on top? Cut that last bit of tape. And, ah! We've got lovely white gloves. Um, no, this isn't to basically prevent um, us getting fingerprints on it. I think it's mostly to stop ourselves stabbing ourselves with any sheer metal parts, which might be made out of. Now, Creality do a lovely version of this, but it's £80. And I wasn't in the market for spending £80 on a hood to go over my 3D printer. So I did some research and I bought one by a company called... Comgrow, which is C-O-M-G-R-O-W. Um, they seem to have good reviews online. Um, Amazon is almost uh, una unanimously um, positive. So, yep, I picked myself one of these up and the very next day it turned up on my doorstep. Okay, we seem to have a lot of metal tubing here. It's made of aluminium, so it's very, very light. Let's split this open and see what we've got inside it. We got lots of little uh, aluminium tubes and some big aluminium tubes. And off to the right there, we got some plastic um, spaces for them to go into. Okay, this bit's going to be a bit dull, so let's speed this up a bit. Okay, with the pieces laid out, let's have a look at the instructions and see what we have to do. We have got the hood itself here. Um, looks like it's inside some uh, protective packaging which is nice because, yeah, the amount of times that I've had stuff arrive and it's torn or it's damaged because it wasn't packed properly. Ooh, okay, that feels horrible. <laughs> it's proper sticky, gummy plastic. Um, but it doesn't actually leave any residue on your fingers, so I think it's just the kind of plastic they've made it out of has a funny finish to it. It's got a window on the front and it's got a zipper that goes all the way around it. So yeah, that actually looks quite nice. Not quite sure how much stuff's going to stick to it. I imagine this is going to be a fingerprint slash dust magnet. But hopefully a wet cloth should clean it off without too much issue. Okay, let's go for this. So we've got... Um, oh, oh, that pills horribly. <laughs> That's a horrible noise. Yep, so apparently we have to start making the um, skeleton for it first out of the aluminium tubing, which basically is going to involve putting all these together in the right order and chucking them into the spaces so it makes a nice cage which basically the big plastic black um, hood itself can go over. Okay, let's engage this into fast forward because otherwise this is going to be an extremely dull video. Let's get building.
And with that, the construction is done. And this thing is looking really, really nice. It's got some nice features to it as well. You've got the uh, tear off section here where basically you can open it up and you can thread all your cables through into it and then put them back down again so there's no risk of anything getting out if the fire does happen. You can put all your bits and pieces in here such as your scrapers and uh, your Allen keys. On the side here, you've got another side in another um, hatch in case uh, you have um, cables coming out the back on the other side of a printer because it's designed for several different kinds of printers, pretty much most of the enders and a few others as well. So yeah, this is great. So let's get around to putting the printer actually in. And yeah, the enclosure is big enough just basically just to slot this straight in there. There's no issue at all. Um, doesn't touch any of the sides of it, doesn't get anywhere near the hot uh, end or any of the other bits that might uh, cause a problem if any of the hot parts touch the outside of the tent. But yeah, you can just put it straight in, line it up, and there we go. As you can see, there's lots and lots of easy uh, access around it. I'll just put the uh, power cable in through the side pocket and attach it into the back of the printer. This is the uh, Creality Ender 3S1. Uh, now this section of the back here is for um, other cables you can put through. We can put an extractor fan on there. I'm going to use the big um, side flap here because this cable is quite large and it's going to go straight out into uh, the power source at the other side. So just thread that through. And with that threaded through, I can just plug it. I can just grab the uh, plug and plug it straight into uh, my surge protector here. I'm also using a surge protector because, yeah, we want to avoid as much uh, safety issues as possible. So, yeah, that's going to go in there as well. So if there is a problem, it's going to click off the surge protector and also any fires going to be contained inside this lovely fireproof tent. Now, let's try the zips. These are always a problem on um, cheaper stuff. And, yeah, oh, that zips around perfectly. It doesn't feel like it's getting uh, hung up on anything. And I don't feel it's going to rip. So that's lovely. Just over the edge here and, yeah. Hasn't caught on anything, so yeah, I'm very happy with that. And here we are. It's a bit of a chunky beast because it's designed to take several different kinds of 3D printers. But yeah, this actually uh, fits very nicely. Okay, let's take a look at the interior. It's got this nice uh, metallic fireproof material all inside. And yeah, that covers the entire interior of the uh, tent. So uh, it can't burn down or let any heat out and also keeps the thing nicely insulated so it has a nice constant temperature in there and if the worst does happen it should prevent the fire from escaping as i say i've also got a surge protector as well there so if anything does happen that should pop it off so i should be fairly secure here and yep the tent just flops straight over the front of it and you've got this nice uh thick fireproof um window at the front and there's the comgrow logo now one issue I wanted to fix was lighting because it gets quite dark in there and I'm going to have to record some of this. So I've got USB um, LED strips. So I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to put that in through the same slot the side that the main power cable is running through. And just thread it in. I'm using USB because it's um, there's a USB secure uh, socket on my uh, surge protector. And yeah, so that should make it nice and safe. And these are low voltage, so they're not going to create any heat or any issues. So I'm just going to tape these down using the adhesive back of the USB strip. I mean, these were designed to go on the back of TVs, but um, quite frankly, you can use them for anything. So just tape them down. Stick them down, make sure they're nice and secure. And just wrap it around the plastic bit of the tent there. And let's see if these work. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Look at that lovely light and that should make it light up lovely. And with the LED strips attached and the printer installed, we can now see what this thing looks like when it's running. And there we go. Yep. And the nice thing is because the um, interior of it is actually metallic, it all pretty much reflects the light from the LED strip and actually diffuses it nicely through the entire tent. So yeah, that has worked out very, very well. And yeah, I'm liking this thing a lot. It's neat, it's tidy. I mean, the plastic's a bit sticky and funny, but I imagine that's part of the um, fire retardant um, qualities of it. But yeah, it's not catching on anything. There's no issue. And this is just looking absolutely nice. It just sits there right in the middle of my 3D printers. And yeah, I mean, it does stand out like a sore thumb, but quite frankly, 
the fact it adds extra safety to me printing out my long prints uh, in my um, little studio here really, really, really makes me feel a lot better about running this thing. Yeah, very happy with that. There's a little LED box that keeps the LEDs um, running. And there. So yeah, the Congro um, Fire Retardant 3D Printer 10 is very, very nice. It's stable. The printer fits in very, very well in there. It says it fits the uh, Ender 3S1, and it really does. And yeah, it also reduces the noise as well. I can barely hear anything um, with this um, running inside that tent, which is another lovely feature I hadn't thought of. Now, I've never owned the Creality um, fireproof hood. So if anyone there watching actually has, please let me know what you think of it, whether it actually stands up to this one or whether it's actually worth the extra sort of um, 50, 60 quid you'd have to pay for it. Because this thing was about 20 pounds and yeah, I'm liking it. Thanks for watching 3D Printed Soup. Stay happy, stay safe. Keep printing.